call to order the Board of Supervisors for our June 14th, 2011 board meeting. And I'll say that again in just a minute. Okay. Are we on? Yeah. Okay, we're on. I'd like to convene the Board of Supervisors and call the Board of Supervisors to order for our January 14th, 2011 board meeting. Would we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Dana, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I have two announcements. Uh, the first is to announce that uh, last Friday, uh, uh, when we finished Friday's session on the preliminary budget, we continued the preliminary budget until 2.30 p.m. today. And so today we will try to finish up on preliminary budget, inc including our uh, uh, summary session. So that hopefully will happen someplace around 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, the second announcement is last week the board did meet in closed session. A conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, exposure to litigation, one case, Pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9b1, no action was taken. We'll move forward to the consent agenda items. These items are expected to be routine and non-controversial. They'll be acted upon by the Board at one time without further discussion. Any Board member, staff member, or interested member of the public may request that any item on the consent agenda be removed prior to the Board's taking action. Does any Board member wish to pull any item on the consent agenda? Number nine, please. Uh, any staff, any other board member? Any staff member wish to pull any item on the consent agenda? Number nine. Does any member of the public here present this morning that has any item on the consent agenda, items one through nine inclusive, they wish to have discussed with or by the board prior to the board's taking action? Peter. Number five, number six, please. And number 11. Number 11 is not on the consent agenda, Peter. Yes. Huh? <laughs> Joe? <coughs> Number five? Yes, sir. That's already been pulled by Peter. Okay. Uh, the chair is open for a motion on the balance of the consent agenda as presented. I make so, the motion. Second. I have a motion by Supervisor Spellman, a second by Supervisor Tofanelli. Do I have further board discussion? All in favor so indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Passes on a 5-0 vote of the board. We'll go to item five. A resolution authorizing the Director of Environmental Health to apply for and enter into an agreement with the State of California to implement the Rural Underground Storage Tank Prevention Program. This is an Environmental Management Agency item. Uh, hold on. Let's have Peter come up first and ask, ask his question. Huh? Would you like to report first? No. You pulled it. What's your question? If you hadn't pulled it, it would have been approved. So I don't know what he's supposed to address if he doesn't know your question. Okay. Uh, number five, do we have any leaks, first of all, on the underground storage? Does any reports and any documentation how much <coughs> leaks we have? Uh, I like to have a definite definition of the, you're seeking a grant uh, for 101000 for two-year condition. Uh, is that... Uh, who will pay off the grant? I'd like to have it identified, actually. Who is, uh, is it a state grant, I presume? And if the state grant, who's gonna pay for that state grant in time? Uh, I wanna know who requested this. As far as, you have constituents that uh, overload you with emails or phone calls that they want that tanks inspected uh, by an agency, uh, so, who and how is that being done right now? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So there, Brian, any other public comments on item five before I close off the public comments on item five? Joe? <coughs> Joe Kelly, my question is, sir, will you recuse yourself? Well, I? Yes, sir. Why is? Well, because you're, you kind of run into problems with your Tryon bill project and that sphere of influence with uh, Angels Camp in land use, zoning, development, state funded projects. So I would ask that you start recusing yourself on those types of projects because it will lead to financial gain of you, yourself, and family in the future. I don't understand how you think this has any way will This has something to do with just the number of side. items that I just listed. 
which is land development also. Okay, well let me answer your question, no. Well that's, thank you sir. Next question. That's great, I appreciate that because you're you welcome. Go along and don't bother to follow the rules. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any other, any other public comments, please come forward. Okay, Brian, will you come forward? Do you like to make a statement? Yes, in order to address those questions, Brian Moss, Environmental Management. Um, actually, this this um, grant is uh, is coming through the state, but it's federal funds, and it actually originates with the um, Solid Waste Disposal Act, as amended by the Energy Policy Act, two thousand and five. Um, as far as leaking underground tanks, we have. 110 closed cases. We have 40 that we continue to pursue and work on for mediation, and we have 32 active uh, facilities at this point. So um, the grant will be used actually for training underground storage tank owners and operators to help offset the cost because really our fees cover between 45 and 50 percent of that program cost. So this is just actually offsetting the cost so we don't. We don't look at raising fees and passing on additional costs to the community and the business sector. Um, this will also assist in letting us get additional staff uh, certified in underground storage tank inspection. So as far as, again, as far as the funding is concerned, originates from the feds, it is passed down to the state. And it is passed down to um, uh, jurisdictions with 150,000 population and under, which is, a, which is the similar format that we have to the Rural Reimbursement Act and program that we've been receiving over the past several years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any discussion by the board? Uh, chair's open for a motion on item five. So moved. <clears throat> I have a motion of approval as presented uh, by Supervisor Calloway. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by uh, Supervisor Spellman for the board discussion. All in favor so indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed. Passes on a 5-0 vote of the board. Move forward then to item six, a minute order approving the fiscal year 2011-2012 administrative match agreement between the County of Calaveras Barris, and Area 12 Agency on Aging in the amount of $77,419 and authorize the board chair to sign the agreement. Peter, you pull this. What are your questions? Six, right? My name is Race Rancho Calaveras. Item number six, right? Number six. Okay. Uh, this is funds for administering administering a service that does not include any funds to the aged. And I just question is that uh, you're going to pay for additional administration? How much of it going to go to the actual people who need the help? Thank okay, you. thank you, Peter. Any other public comments on this matter before I close off public comments on item six? Okay, I'm closing off public comments. Uh, Shirley, would you like to address the issue? Good morning, Shirley Ryan, Administrative Office. Um, it's called an administrative match, but it is the county share of the matching funds for federal and state grants that support programs to the housing, such as Meals on Wheels. And it's the match required by the older Americans and the Cal older Californians um, uh, grants. And, and they provide a wide variety of services to our older Americans and disabled adults. And what is the specific breakdown? I didn't grab that okay, entire package fine. before. Thank you. Any board discussion? Go ahead, Steve. Uh, I, I think Peter raises an important point uh, that many small agencies, and we've seen this in our budget process, and many of our departments are facing a, a difficult moment in which just staying alive, you have to continue administration, but a smaller and smaller percentage of the whole goes to the actual services the administrations are supposed to deliver. In order to accomplish greater efficiencies, we have formed JPAs, Joint Power Agreements, with other counties. So this one covers Mariposa and Calaveras County. We're, we're not, we've combined administrations there. We've also been working toward uh, an effort to uh, jointly administer over this last period uh, with uh, the Amador Tuolumne uh, Community Action Agency, ATCA, uh, 
we have not yet reached and may not for some time reach uh, a, an agreement to combine all four counties, but that would be the best way, in my view, to, to achieve the efficiencies and, and deliver more resources to the point of service. Uh, but that work has begun, and uh, we're just not able to have completed that by this budget round. That requires us, we're also bringing in-house uh, to some savings. Uh, it is moving from the administrative uh, work that had been going to Mariposa County is now coming to Calaveras, which I think precipitates this action. Right, but the JPA for the Area 12 a Agency on Aging, Aging is a five-county oh, JPA. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I was going to see Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Never mind. Yeah. 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 It's Alpine, Alpine, <laughs> Amador, Calaveras, Mariposa, and Tuolumne. Right. Well, <laughs> the, the point is similar, however, that this is an agency that has combined administrative work across a number of counties. We need to do a lot more of this, but, but this is a fairly thrifty uh, when you talk about the percentages in the area 12. This is Marita's, not mine, and I was mistaken. Well, you're doing just a fine job. Just Thank you. <laughs> so thanks for the plug for CMCA. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> had to get that in somehow. We, we, both, we both sit on it. So. Uh, okay. So that completes the board discussion. Chair will entertain a motion of approval on item that 6 right. as presented. So moved. I have a motion by Supervisor Calloway. Do I have a second? I'll ask Steve, you're not going to second? No, I'm happy to second it, yes. <laughs> I have a second by Supervisor Walensky. We, we have to negotiate a second here. <laughs> All in favor, so indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Passes on a 5-0 vote of the board. We'll move forward to item 9 on the consent agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. A resolution for contract extension with California, California Forensic Metal, Medical Group incorporated for medical services for Calaveras County Jail inmates from July 1st, 2011 through June 30th, 2012, this is the next fiscal year. Uh, I believe, Darren, you pulled this. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to initiate the discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman Tryon, members of the board and county council, um, I pulled number nine uh, for some clarification. Um, I don't really have anything particular, uh, any barn burning questions or uh, issues with this. I know that uh, these are particularly difficult medical services to get contracted for a small county. I understand also that there has been attempts to uh, possibly uh, work through Catholic Healthcare West with St. through St. Joe's, but that's not an option at this time. Um, so I, I understand there's uh, progress being made or, or people looking at different alternatives. However, uh, it says that we've been in contract with this particular company, the Forensic Medical Group Incorporated, since 1999. My question is, um, is there anybody that can uh, give me a definitive answer on if and when the last time was that we had a request for proposals um, for this uh, medical services to be done? <coughs> the Subbity Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have not had a request for proposal for a number of years. Uh, at least it's a, for the time that I've been jail commander for four years. Four years? We have talked to vendors in the area and uh, we did before we got through the trouble of spending a lot of staff time and money to put out an RFP. We talked to the viable uh, vendors who because of our lack of numbers basically took a pass mm -hmm. and with, with the new jail coming and the increased inmate population, we will definitely be putting out an RFP in hopes that somebody will take the line and be competitive for us. But at this point, we have not had anybody that was worth our with the, with the, the staff time to uh, put forward, put an RFP out. Mr. Hubbard, you deserve a pay raise. You read my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. With the with the new jail, with the increased number of bed capacity, would it be, would it be more likely that that we would be able to get a, uh, you know, so. Well, with 80, uh, it's possible. At 65, um, we usually don't get a return phone call. Uh, we do, we've had vendors contact us. We have provided questions, answers for them, um, and the numbers. And once they look at it, they just, they just say, it's not cost efficient for them at 65. With additional 80, for the 80 bets, maybe. But okay. we're gonna put it out anyway, just in the, in the hopes that, that, uh, that that's a possibility. Thank you. 
Any other board questions? Any public comments on this item? <coughs> Madeline, you have? Oh, you're all right? Okay. Uh, okay, chair's open for a motion of approval on item nine as presented. Thank you, motion. I have a motion by Supervisor Spellman. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by two Supervisor Tofanelli. Uh, for the board discussion, all in fa favor so indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed. Passes on a 5-0 vote of the Board of Supervisors. Um, okay, we'll now move <coughs> forward to public comments. Five minutes uh, per person. Comments shall be limited to items of interest to the public that are within the subject matter jurisdiction uh, of the Board of Supervisors. I'll also announce at this time if there are going to be public comments on the regular agenda after public comments and it is not a public hearing, then the, the uh, public comments will be li uh, limited to three minutes per person and we do not allow individuals to pass on remaining time to other individuals. So with that, we're at public comments. Any public comments, please come forward. Address the board from the podium. If you would be so kind as to state your name for the record, that'll help, help our board clerk. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Matt Brock and I live in San Andreas. I'm here to uh, urge the board to maintain the current staffing to the sheriff's office. We understand there's a large budget issue, but nothing is more important to my family than our public safety and the safety of the deputies. Reduced staffing opens the door for drug and criminal activity, including, including the meth trade and gang activity in our county. We don't want that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. Do you have the timer? Who has the timer? Does anybody have a timer? Dear race ranch of Calabres, first of all, uh, Mr. Chair, would you like me to test you on that? You're controlling what I said during public comments? Because I'd be more than happy to test it. So again, what's you. the question? Would you like me to test you on the planet as far as what people are going to say in public comments? Because I'd be more than happy to test you. What's Next thing, <clears throat> let me finish. Uh, JPA, sir, I have a very much hesitancy and it's not exactly reflecting on you folks' ability to communicate with local communities around here. Give you an example. Last <coughs> week or week before there was something about education because you want to educate the kids. So you put on a $16,000 administration cost to the taxpayers concerning fish hatchery. Let me inform you. In Clements, you can take it free, folks. In Clements, you can have it free. I took the Boy Scouts there. And those people, I'd be more than happy to host the parents and the kids explaining what fish hatchery is without costing the taxpayers, local taxpayers, the $16,000 to administer it. Uh, another thing I haven't heard yet, and I'm sure looking forward to it, the disclosure of the county's liability and the funding of it. How much is the unfunded liability of this county toward their local taxpayers? And I do resent the idea that it's a grant, it's money from heaven, because it is not. If you don't take it out of my left pocket, then let it be clear. You're taking it out of a taxpayer's right pocket or the back pocket. Now, it might make you feel real good. Oh, listen, I'm giving you something for nothing. But the reality is, until you folks really to be tell the whole truth, disclose it, what is the impact on the taxpayers? A grant is a very short answer. The grant that this is a bond that you sold, but you're not disclosing who is going to pay for those bonds and when and what it's going to cost. Because that's not telling the whole truth. I mean, it's, for, it's nice that you want to do it and you're going to get my sympathy out of it. But the idea of that, hey, we're going to borrow money, the Fed's going to borrow money, or the state borrow money, that's not telling the whole truth. Because you're, stealing, you're still stating the folks who are sitting behind me and watching to that camera, that's not the whole truth. And it's about time. It's time to fully tell all the truth and all the consequences and especially all the consequences as the strings attached to those free money. But if you don't tell the whole truth, the folks cannot 
make a judgment on it. Because the folks only have one action that they can take in their behalf, their kids' behalf, and their grand grandkids' behalf. Is at the ballot box when they fill out the red dot or black dot. If you don't have the guts and integrity and honesty to fully disclose those free money, the source of the free money, and who's liable to finally at the end pay for that free money, it's not exactly reflective real good to you folks, but if you haven't been in for it, on your staff and administration. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. <coughs> Dixie Poseland from Rancho Calaveras. Tonight at 6 o'clock uh, in Valley Springs, the American Legion is holding a flag day ceremony, and I would like to invite everyone in the county. This is not, I'm not representing anyone but myself, only because I love our flag in our country. So if you can be there, sure would appreciate it. Thank you. Any other public comments? So, yes, young lady. Well, okay. Go ahead, Al, and then you'll follow Al. You just wait right there. Al, Al doesn't take a long time, right, Al? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Al. Uh, Al Sigala, Calaveras County Taxpayer Association. Uh, happy Flag Day. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring some good news. The, uh, it's possible to remove the lawyer tax on real estate. This is something new. And uh, the remarks I'm reading are from uh, John Coppell and Jennifer Marks from the Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association. And this is, uh, it's, it's good to have something coming up that actually is going to be a blessing. Now, this blessing is really for people, not lawyers. And so the lawyers that are here may not be too happy to hear this. When confronting a complex real, uh, legal issue, it is wise to seek the professional advice of an attorney. Regrettably, however, some issues have been rendered unnecessarily complex in order to protect the turf of the legal community. This is exactly what happens in California when it comes to designing a beneficiary for your real property. Under current law, real estate is passed to heirs through a will, trust, or by joint tenancy with the right of survivorship. Wills have to be probated through probate court, a costly and time-consuming process that entails both attorney and court fees. Trusts are usually created by an attorney and need to be updated periodically. Both methods are unnecessarily expensive. There is no need to make the inheritance of real estate so difficult that it becomes a hardship on homeowners, especially low-income families and seniors. Assemblyman Don Wagner has introduced a bill, AB 699, to cut through the costly red tape and allow homeowners to simply file a revocable transfer on death beneficiary deed to pass property on to a de designated heir. Homeowners would simply file the RRTOD deed on top of their existing deed in the county recorder's office. This deed could be revoked at any time and the new RTOD deed substituted, thus allowing the homeowner to change beneficiaries or switch to an entirely different in inheritance vehicle. <clears throat> and it can be done without a, a lawyer. The, there's more remarks on this, but I think that is the substance of it. I, I, I don't know if the board of, it's proper for the Board of Supervisors to uh, express uh, support for something in the legislature, but if it is, perhaps through CSAC, it uh, would be a great to do that. And, uh, and that would take uh, quite a burden off the people. Um, uh, uh, in my remaining time, I'd like to compliment our, our, uh, our assessor, um, uh, even though uh, there was a lot of uh, angry words spoken. Uh, I think she's doing the right job in, in reducing the, uh, uh, the taxation, the property taxation in accordance with state law. And even though this is causing a problem in administering county government because you have less income coming in, it's only proper that she do does that, and so as our taxpayers group uh, applauds her for that. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? Good morning. I'm Marilyn Rowland, and I'm here on behalf of uh, two 
two departments that I really enjoy working with through the vet's office. That is our animal shelter. And the uh, concern I have is the staffing that might be uh, done away with, uh, more cuts. I have a real feel for the animals that come into our office that people need to get them there and our staffing at the shelter is kind of showing stress. And I think that in order to do a great job for the animals as well as the county in dealing with these strays, uh, we need to look deeply into keeping our shelter staffed. The other department I'm here for today is the Sheriff's Department, unbeknownst to them. <laughs> I'm here to see if we can't get a substation again in Valley Springs. This substation is very much needed. It is a place where they can do their paperwork. Other agencies can also uh, come there to do some of their paperwork. I really see a need for the Sheriff's Department to have a, a uh, link to the Valley Springs area. Uh, I know that there's certain monies that were uh, looked at several years ago, like our tax cigarette money. Uh, maybe we can look into maybe funding it through the tax on, the, on that. Uh, maybe uh, maybe I can challenge uh, people in our area to help me um, help fund it. Uh, we are opening up the thrift store in the Valley Springs area, and I'm going to call it Help in Hand, in which I'm going to donate a lot of the money to different items in our area. Uh, children that have no shoes to go to a dance, prom dress, uh, shoes for baseball. Uh, this is what I'm about and I'm going to call it help in hand and if I can help in this situation I would like to challenge all of the area of Valley Springs, Rancho, La Contenta to help me out so I can help my county I love. Thank you. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. Uh, Gary Coos, Sheriff. Um, in regards to this uh, last lady, Dr. we are actively looking for a substation at Valley Springs. I found uh, two of them. I kind of want to stay into the, the heart of town there where it's most needed. When people shop, they can stop by the substation and uh, I have two two prospects but <coughs> it's again a money issue it's uh, I think seven hundred some dollars a month and I also want to uh, share with uh, the prospective uh, uh, supervisors down there but uh, uh, for you back there I, I'm definitely looking for a spot where there's there's an offer from Jalen Fire Department that's that's so far out of the way that it would be probably uh, <coughs> Uh, not a good spot to have it and also there's one uh, we had at the church down there but they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't think it was a good idea to bring people by the church and stuff so uh, we're actually looking for one it's just basically funding issues right now to fight it. so uh, but my goal is next to have one in Valley Springs thank you thank you any other public comments please come forward Joe Kelly, I hold the uh, Calaveras County and FEMA's grail in my hand. This is a report that was worked up in 1988 and printed in 1990. I understand last week you had a pretty interesting FEMA discussion here. Too bad you won't pay attention to it. This report was a scope of study or area study. It was about Cosgrove <coughs> Creek and San Antonio Creek tributary. Within this scope of study, the hydraulic analysis for this study was based on unobstructed flow. The flood elevations shown on the profiles are thus considered valid only if hydraulic structures remain unobstructed, operate properly, and do not fail. There was a principal flood problem stated in this thing. 
There are no recorded flood problems in Calaveras County. That's interesting. Now going to Zone A, which is the one that's primarily used in this county for this flood insurance debacle or scheme, is the flood insurance rate that corresponds to 100-year floodplains that are determined in the flood insurance study by approximate methods. Nowhere stating here best engineering practices. Because detailed hydraulic analyses are not performed for such areas, no base flood elevations or depths are shown within this zone. Now, why are you, the Board of Supervisors, resisting negotiating concessions with FEMA as other jurisdictions have done? Three of you folks, the illegal quorum, went to FEMA up in uh, Lundgren's office. What did you come back with besides zip, not a nothing? One jurisdiction has received concessions of minimum premium payment and the implementation of elevation certificates and the jurisdiction reportedly has 27 senators on board. What do you folks have other than a quorum violating the Brown Act? So why, why did you adopt the flood ordinance which incorporated the adoption of this report? Have any of you read or studied this report prior to adoption? Now somewhere it comes to my mind, I remember, and maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I am wrong, how much money comes back to Calaveras County from FEMA? A payback or a mordida as they say in Mexico. But something else comes to mind here is negligence. That this board was negligence when it passed its flood ordinance. It just went along with FEMA to get something done. And you didn't look out for the property rights, the ownership, and the people of this county. And now you've really got us in a quandary. And it isn't just this county. Now, why doesn't our representative to CSAC go up there and talk to the people up there? about this problem, what they're having up there. So we could receive some information back. Same thing with RCRC, except maybe we need different representation that would have more of a concern and a concept of discussing with others to see what's happening in their jurisdictions. So that maybe a consolidated effort can be done within the state of California to resist this in those areas where it's not really a necessity or where it's a bogus tax. Call it insurance, I call it a tax. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public, <clears throat> any other public comments, please? Good morning, I'm Tanya Dawson from Valley Springs, and since you're still working on the budget, um, I would just like to again ask that um, the sheriff's department and the deputies not be cut. The sheriff's department and deputies are um, necessary to keep our country free and safe. And um, if you cut things, cut things like the 125,000 to market food stamps and other programs that redistribute wealth. Those are not protected under the Constitution. Um, you know, public safety is more important than, say, museums and parks. And we have to prioritize of what necessities are instead of the luxuries. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. Seeing none, that closes public comments. We'll move forward then to our 9.30 a.m. regular agenda item. Item 11, a resolution. <coughs> To accept bid and award contract between Calaveras County and George Reed Incorporated for construction of the ARRA, which is the American Relief and Recovery Act, I think, something like that, uh, stimulus money, uh, maintenance to projects, oh, here it says it, by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, see, I did get it right, Marita, of 2009 for an amount not to exceed $505,790. This is a public works issue. Is there anybody from public works wishing to address it? It's pretty straightforward. Is there any discussion by the board? Any discussion by the public? Yes. Chairs. 
Okay, Peter, come on up. Grace Rancho Calabres. I find it very interesting that uh, I got nothing against the uh, reed com company that's going to do the layover, which is fine. And maybe they're doing the best job. But I find lacking that nobody else, local, from the county, from the state, even put a bid in it. Now this is a North Dakota, South Dakota company, I believe. And nobody, our dream. John Reed, Yes, sir. Read the fine well, they, they, may, yeah. they, they, they may have incorporated in some place other than California, and I don't see on that. that. <laughs> so. Yeah, sure, that'd be the day. No, but South Dakota is one of the places that have the best tax for uh, commercial. It's not Calabas County, folks. <laughs> yeah. There's some reason that nobody wants to do business with you. And I find it disturbing <laughs> that public works, not capable, you don't have enough staff, rank and file, those guys who do the dish, ditches. You got all sorts of staff and administration of it, but we cannot find locally to pave the road. Only one person, one entity bids on it. Something's wrong with it. Does it bother anybody? Does it bother anybody on this soapbox? Does it bother anybody in a county? Nobody wants to do business with this county? I mean, there's got to be something's wrong, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public wait a minute, let me Any other public comments? And I'm going to close off public comments on this. I'll bring it back to the board. Uh, is there any board discussion on this item? Yeah. yeah. For the record, Peter, I I'm sure you know, because we've had conversations, you know I read the board packets and agendas and all that stuff very thoroughly. And uh, George Reed Construction, uh, this particular uh, this particular unit is based out of Modesto. They also have a yard in Sonora. They've got people that work here in Calaveras County. Why do I know that? Because George Reed Construction gave $2,500 donation to my predecessor 60 days before the election. And that was a major red flag. So <clears throat> I did a little research on George Reed, so I know a little bit about their operation. <laughs> Um, it, it does. Okay. Fair, yeah. fair. We've crossed off public yeah, it does. Back to the board now. It, you, you are correct in saying that it shows that they are a subsidiary of a larger incorporate LLC or some kind of thing like that, which is out of state. But what I would submit to you is that because of the uh, horrible tax structure that we have in this state, which is very prohibitive to business, that there are people who seek what's known as tax shelters. I'm sure you've heard that term before. And so there are people who incorporate LLC in Nevada, South Dakota, other places that are more favorable uh, business climate for, for their corporate structure in terms of on paper uh, for their legal matters. But um, nevertheless, uh, George Reed is uh, a California company. They've been in this area for quite some time. I believe they were incorporated in 1948 originally. So um, if that helps at all, uh, on your questions for that. So the, uh, I don't know, hopefully that helps, but that's a little bit of background. They, they, they are fairly local and the, you know, the, the, the tax, the, the tax shelter thing, you know, is, is kind of tricky sometimes, but you know, uh, in terms of getting the best deal for the public, which is, I know you're a member of the Taxpayers Association and you've got your Tea Party shirt on today, and I, I admire you and admonish you. Uh, congratulate you, you know, for your efforts. No, okay. <laughs> I'm not into that, so <laughs> there's no worries. Okay. But, but uh, I'm just saying that in the interest of tax savings, you know, obviously this is a good example of someone who has been in business in the state of California since 1948 that I'm sure has no, had no desire to incorporate out of state with an LLC or whatever in South Dakota or wherever it is they're located. But this is what pe businesses and people are driven to in this state to be able to stay afloat, to be able to make a profit, to be able to continue to conduct business. It's unfortunate that they have to go through those hoops and, and go through those steps to be able to continue to be in business. It's, it's a sad, sad thing and I wish that it wasn't so. But I, what I would say to you is that if this person has been in business since 1948 in the state, is now incorporated out of state to, to, to save taxes, okay, as in a shelter process. If this person is a fighter, a survivor, somebody that wants to do business here, and uh, we definitely look for those type of people, and I know that Public Works does, in terms of you know how we uh, contract for the county on getting the best deal and, and people that have a good reputation 
and experience for getting things done. I still need to take it up with somebody at their corporation though about that $2,500 donation to my predecessor. Followed up with a uh, $380,000 no bid contract for the county. <coughs> That's still on my plate, so I'll be looking into that, but thanks for reminding me. Steve, <coughs> as I gather from the agenda item 11, what we're talking about here is whether or not to accept a bid and award a contract. Uh, so the criteria I'm looking at here is are we getting value for the amount of work that we're expecting? Is this a competitive bid and is the service appropriate? I know that these roads are much in need of repair. I find that George Reed has done credible work in this county and for that reason I would like to make a motion to approve the resolution. I have a motion by Supervisor Walensky. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Supervisor Calloway. Further board discussion. <coughs> All in favor so indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed? No. It passes on a 4-1 vote with Supervisor Spellman voting in the negative. We will move forward to item 12, a public hearing. The planning department is requesting the Board of Supervisors first approve a resolution adopting the mitigated negative declaration for project number 2, R.6-R.7, and secondly, approve an ordinance for a zoning amendment from U and A1 to RA-40-EP for project number 2, R.6-R.7. Uh, so we have a, a planning, and there's, there's Deborah. Deborah? <coughs> Would Deborah you please Lewis. Initiate the discussion. Thank you, Deborah Lewis, Planner Three. Um, the project that you have before you today, 2006-007, Calaveras River Estates, um, will actually involve three potential actions by the board, rather than the two as described in the agenda. Please refer to the item title block in your Board of Supervisors packet. The applicant, Michael Gurev, is requesting approval of the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring plan. Plan, approval of the zoning amendment, and he is also requesting approval of a tenanted parcel map. Um, there are two parcels in question, totaling approximately 522 acres. Um, the general plan land use designations for those properties are complex. They include a mix of natural resource lands, mineral resource area 2A lands, dam inundation area lands, future single family residential 20 acre and future single family residential 5 acre parcel sizes. And now our proposed new general plan identifies a preferred land use designation for those properties as resource production, which proposes minimum parcel sizes of 40 to 160 acres. The project you have before you today is consistent with both the existing general plan land use designation and the proposed new general plan preferred alternative for the land use designation. <clears throat> the larger parcel is zoned unclassified. The smaller parcel, which is roughly 80 acres, is zoned A1 general agriculture, even though it is made up of steep brush-covered canyon walls and um, really isn't suitable for agricultural activities at all. And the applicant is requesting that they be rezoned to residential agriculture 40 acre environmental protection combining zone. The tentative parcel map is going to divide the 522 acres into four approximately 40 acre parcels and an unsubdivided remainder parcel of about 359 acres. Construction on each 40 acre parcel is going to be limited to a proposed buildable area delineated on each parcel also requested is annexation of proposed parcels one through four to county service area one to obtain road access subject to Calaveras County LAFCO approval. Now this project application was actually submitted early in 2006. Um, the parcels in question are remote, precipitous, inaccessible canyon lands bisected by the Calaveras River. There is however a spectacular view from the northerly edge of the lands, which form a ridge at the end of Harding Road. It was, and still is, the applicant's intention to, pre to create four view lots at the terminus of Harding Road and leave a large remainder parcel, and it was his goal to do this within the limitations imposed by the general plan. Staff has actually received and reviewed eight versions of this map. Over the past five years, we have worked closely with the applicant to revise 
everything, including number of parcels, parcel sizes, parcel configurations, and the proposed zoning. And we have finally arrived at a configuration that works. And with regard to the 359 acre remainder parcel, it became clear that the challenging topography, undisturbed habitats, and the presence of the Calaveras River make problematic any future development. At this time, it isn't even possible to access the south side of the Calaveras River. We understand that there are Jeep trails out there somewhere um, that allow access from the south, but those don't even show up on aerial photographs anymore. Now these same features, um, the topography, the habitat, and the river led the applicant to the realization that the resource values of these lands should be preserved. The applicant has agreed to a recommendation from the California Department of Fish and Game to place a conservation easement over the dam inundation area in the Calaveras River Canyon. In addition, the applicant has voluntarily offered to gift deed the remainder parcel to the Mother Lode Land Trust to protect, protect the habitat values in perpetuity. As the Mother Lode Land Trust will be accepting the conservation easement for the dam inundation area, they will also accept and hold the pedestrian access easement. Now, the Planning Commission staff report contains a lengthy discussion about the dedication of public access easements to the Calaveras River and along the Calaveras River Bank. Pursuant to requirements of both County Code and the Subdivision Map Act, the County can't approve a tentative parcel map or a proposed subdivision which fronts upon a public waterway, river, or stream which does not provide reasonable public access by fee or easement to that portion of the waterway lying within the subdivision. As discussed in the Planning Commission staff report, this easement can be by foot trail, bike trail, horse trail, or any other means of travel. The project applicant has been able to make use of an existing private bulldozed track through the heavy brush that extends from the existing residents on the lands downslope to the bank of the river. It's important to note that up until now, this bulldozed track has not served as a public access to the river, owing to the presence of a locked gate at the existing residence on, at the terminus of Harding Road. If you have specific ac questions about the public access easement, we'll be able to discuss those a little later in the hearing. This project was heard by the Planning Commission on April 7, 2011. Comment letters were received from the California Department of Fish and Game, MyValleySprings.com, and CSERC, and these letters were addressed in the Planning Commission staff report. A second comment letter from MyValleySprings.com arrived after close of the comment period and was presented to staff by staff at the public hearing. Issues discussed at the hearing included the potential need for emergency vehicle access to the river, the potential for fire hazard, and the potential adverse impact to result from light and glare of the three additional residences. And these issues are summarized in the minutes of the meeting of April 7th, which have been included in your packet. The Planning Commission made three separate motions recommending that the Board of Supervisors approve the requested entitlements as well as the en environmental document. All motions passed unanimously. <coughs> An emailed comment letter was received from MyValleySprings.com on April 25th, 2011. That was after the hearing. Following up on their concerns regarding the creation of new light and glare from the three future single-family residences. This letter is included as Appendix 2 in your board packet. MyValleySprings.com requested that a condition specifically addressing the downshielding of exterior lighting be added to the project. This same request was presented during the public comment period at the Planning Commission hearing, and the commissioners were asked by staff if they wanted such a condition added to the project. The response was no, as the code section for the RA zoning designation does not impose that requirement on single-family residences. Planning staff and the applicant believe that this is a project worthy of your consideration and approval. The applicant's representative will be speaking this morning. I also note that an email was received from a concerned neighbor um, sometime yesterday afternoon. It's my understanding he is here today, and the applicant and that neighbor will be addressing their concerns. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Deborah. I'll bring it back to the board. Are there any board comments before uh, I will then go to the applicant? Uh, uh, and the applicant, uh, uh, according to our rules, help me, Jim. 
the applicant has 15 minutes in which to present the, uh, uh, his comments, and then I will open it to public comments, uh, and the public will have three minutes uh, 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 for their comments. And then I close the public hearing, and the applicant, I think at that point, has 10 minutes to provide any rebuttal he so wishes, and then it will come back to the board for further discussion. <coughs> so uh, before you start, sir, let me just ask, are there any board comments at this time? Questions at all. You want to wait till after, uh, till, after. Uh, till it comes back to the board? You want to comment now? Just a brief. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this, I do believe this is your district. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is <coughs> this property in question would be contiguous to CSA 1 and be adopted into the boundaries of CSA 1 um, through LAFCO um, because it gets gains access through Rancho Calaveras. Um, just before any comments are made, I'd like to say that I'd um, I'd like to thank um, the parties involved uh, with the process for the professionalism and uh, addressing all concerns that have been brought forward by people, um, whether they be um, environmental concerns, uh, fiscal concerns for access, um, those type of things. They have gone above and beyond anybody that I've ever dealt with in terms of trying to make things uh, correct and appropriate, um, uh, at least of which is you know, donating you know, over 300 acres to be in a preserve. Um, so uh, I, I, I can't commend them enough, and I'm excited to hear uh, their final proposal here. Um, I don't think there's anything new for me to see. I've looked it over before. I don't think there's much anything different than I, than I saw before. But I'd like to use this to uh, say that this, this is an example of what can be done. Um, there are people who have concerns about fiscal impacts to roads, um, there are people who have concerns about environmental degradation, okay? All of those things are valid and can be addressed and mitigated through uh, the process of, you know, if, if people are willing to come to the table for a collaborative effort, and this is proof positive that those things can be met. And I, it is such that we do have a wonderful place that we live here in Calvary's County, and we should expect that things are done uh, at the very minimum to current best practice standards. Um, so, without further ado. Thank you, sir. You have 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Supervisors. Mike Hakem, 3414 Brookside Road in Stockton. I'm here today to represent the Calaveras River Estates. To your left is our project representative, Dick Slauson in the blue shirt. <coughs> our engineer from Siegfried, our engineer from Siegfried is Michelle Hawley. With the board's indulgence, I'd like to hand out an easement map. I think it may be helpful with the clerk's uh, assistance. There are, there are 11 copies there, and it may be helpful to have that in front of you. Uh, as we go through, you're going to probably want to know a, a better locational map. I've color-coded it so you have a better idea of, of exactly where the easements are, how they relate to the geographical location of the property, and uh, the termination uh, relationship of the different uh, easement areas. As referenced in the board letter and the staff report, and as you included in a brief staff report by senior planner Deborah Lewis, the project is a zoning amendment to create four 40-acre parcels. As you know, there are, is one there now, and we're creating three additional and then the 360-acre unsubdivided remainder, which is the blue area. As indicated, we're annexing the four parcels into CSA 1, and there is no general plan amendment. The overarching new zoning would be RA 40 EP, which is Environmental Protection Combining Zone. <coughs> the water will be with Calaveras County Water District. The sewer will be individual septic tanks pursuant to a waste leach field study by Beta Engineering and approved by your Public Works Department, and fire will be handled by Jenny Lynn. Pursuant to staff direction and public works oversight, each parcel has a, a very specific and limiting building envelope. So uh, each parcel has a building envelope which <coughs> buildings must be built in, including outbuildings and second buildings. So the owner of, the pa of the, each of the 40-acre parcels is limited to the area within which there can be buildings. And those, that's approximately one acre out of the 40 that's a required building envelope and that's a recorded requirement on the map. 
Similarly, with the waste, there's an additional half acre to three quarters of an acre of a waste envelope within which the studies have been done, approved by Public Works, for the leach field area. With staff's indulgence, I'm going to hand out the, a lighting condition, which I think My Valley Springs will speak to later. I understand that you do not have a code requirement for shielded lighting, and therefore it cannot be a legal requirement of this application or the map. We have no objection to voluntarily including a mitigation measure or a condition as you select later in the morning uh, for inclusion. So we would have a shielded down lighting uh, requirement on the three new residences. <coughs> as you can see from the conservation map, and I'm not going to go through it entirely, it's, it should be something that you probably at your own time and moment this morning want to go through. There is the public access easement from Harding to the river. There is a separate public access easement along both banks of the river. Those are reflected by the single and double bars. Then the yellow area is obviously the 440 acres. The orange is the dam inundation area. And the blue area is the unsubdivided remainder. The unsubdivided remainder is going to be conveyed in gift fee deed to the Mother Low Trust. And Mr. Dean is here representing the Mother Low Trust this morning to speak to that issue. The reason it's a gift deed is because there's no nexus to require it. And we've made a voluntarily gift of that. And that deed is already lodged with... Uh, old Republic title in Stockton, California. The mitigated negative declaration was circulated. We received comments from agencies. We responded to all of the comments, uh, specifically Fish and Game on the DIA area. Late yesterday, I received an email from uh, Scott McBrien, who he and his wife are in the audience this morning. And I called Scott. He was kind enough to call me back later in the day. We, I read his emails, which I think some of which went to you, and then his email to you again later in the evening. The bottom line is, uh, I think from the staff report, it was unclear to Scott and his wife whether or not we would be inside our property line and we would not be interfering or invading any of his ownership lands. He is now convinced after looking at our maps and exhibits this morning, which I have additional maps, if it would help clarify the issue, that we are staying inside our property line area. We are staying on Harding Road in terms of access to our parcels, in terms of access to the public easement, which is reflected as uh, from Harding to the river. Uh, Scott does have an issue on parking and signage, which I think he can broach with the board. In terms of the uh, air hours of operation, I think Scott did bring a good item to the table that they should be limited to before sunrise and after dusk, so we don't have uh, persons using that particular access all night long. Uh, that would be probably a good idea. I'm going to probably pass that off to the mother load speaker, Mr. Dean, and also Scott to address that with you, and you might have some comments and direction for us on that. Um, the Planning Commission heard this matter. Uh, there were issues raised and resolved, uh, and we were uh, fortunate to have a recommendation to you of unanimous approval. Debbie Lewis has put lots and lots of time in it. It's been five years, and I'm very pleased to bring you what I think is the best project that I'm able to put together with uh, the inclusion of all concerns and items raised. So with those brief comments, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I would be more than happy to answer questions or wait if there are any that come up later after other speakers. And we have our consultants here, including the wastewater consultant, if the board has additional information they would require. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we will open it. Okay, are you part of the... Uh uh, applicant? Okay. No. How much time no, do you use? Huh? It's neighbor. Are you part of the applicant or the no. public? Hey. With? Public. Public. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'll open it for public comments. Those comments are limited to three minutes per person. So please come forward if you're a public member. My wife is in the black shirt. I didn't want to believe her, this lady having me get up and sit down. Um, Scott McBrien, um, I am a neighbor right next door to this property. It's taken, I thought, six years to get this done. I truly wish we could move much faster in the planning areas to make great things happen. I've walked down to that river many, many times. One sad cost I will have to engage in, I guess I will have to go buy a fishing license because I do believe it will be patrolled pretty soon. Um, but nonetheless, the fishing is fantastic, the land is amazing, and it's something great for Rancho and Calaveras. And we need more projects like these. 
I was very worried when I first looked at the project five years ago about egress, and I made those uh, concerns clear. That has been cleaned up, and so the email I sent to you all is in error. It is um, not correct. Um, egress looks as if it's been well handled, and there will be egress all the way down to the river. It's a long, hard walk. I would ask you to consider a few things. One, make it a walking area only. I don't need horses going through a turnstile next to my property. I do want the light mitigated. I don't want to stare out at light at night when my family is out looking at this great area. Um, additionally, parking will be a concern and we'll have to figure out how to mitigate that. I don't want to see people parking all overnight because I'll be making those phone calls and we don't want to be paying tow truck services. Nonetheless, um, please make this happen. Uh, it's been a long time in the waiting, much too long, and we need to learn how to make things happen quicker, more efficiently. Um, so uh, I appreciate what they have done, and I look forward to seeing this. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. Hi, my name is Bob Dean, and today I'm wearing the Land Trust hat as opposed to some other hats that you've seen me wear. Um, the, this, this process, as Mr. Scott has said, has been going on for quite some time. I've been involved, at least at the conversation level, for the last uh, four years with Mr. Slauson. And uh, it's been my experience that there's never been an issue regarding the importance of this, uh, this canyon, not only for its resource values and its aesthetic values, but from my perspective, uh, it has significant watershed uh, uh, issues as well. And, I, and I'm, I'm really pleased that, that we're moving in the direction where we're, we're able to, uh, in perpetuity, begin to protect the watersheds of this county. And, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very much supportive of this project, the Mother Lode Land Trust has been working, as I said, for a considerable period of time with the applicants. And um, we've looked at many of the options that might, might best preserve this property. And the one that they came up with that seems to work, and we're very much satisfied with it, is the uh, fee ownership for the 359 acres and then additional conservation easements for the dam inundation areas and, and whatever else is proposed by those four private parcels. So. If you have any questions with regard to the land trust responsibility in this, please, please feel free to ask me. Let me ask you a quick question. Did, you, did the land trust or any other party pay any compensation to the owner for the uh, acquisition of the... Uh, no, no, nothing at all. As a matter of fact, they will be, be uh, giving us an endowment to manage that property. A what? An endowment to manage that property. Okay. So. You are a nonprofit. That's correct. Okay. So, the, so what, what compensation they'll receive is basically the assess they'll go out and get an appraiser to appraise the property and give it to you and then deduct the appraised value as a I have to assume that's what you're going to do. We're, we're prepared to take it. Okay. But, you're, but, you, but you nor others are paying direct compensation. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, any other public comments? Uh, uh, yes. Help me with her name. Colleen. Colleen. Thank you. Uh, Colleen Platt, MyValleySprings.com. Good morning. Um, our, our organization is pleased to speak in support of the Calaveras River Estates development. If this project is approved, hundreds of acres of open space, wildlife habitat, and Calaveras River watershed will be preserved. Public access will be provided down to and along the Calaveras River. This will happen through voluntary dedication of land, through conservation easements, building envelopes, and other project conditions. New parcels will be on public water. We have one suggestion for improvement. Include a provision for downshielding of outdoor lighting and glare. We have talked to the applicant and they are agreeable to this. MyValleySprings.com participated in public review and commented on this project and it has been a long process and I commend them for sticking with it. Most of you know who we are, but some of you may not know our background. We're a nonprofit group founded in 2005 whose mission is to pr promote responsible growth and development by involving the public in the planning process in order to preserve the quality of life in Valley Springs and Calaveras County. Among other things, we review proposed projects and encourage others to do the same. Some have called us no growth. Some have called us pro-growth. 
Some say we're environmentalists who are against every project, while others are convinced we promote high-density high-rises. None of these extremes are true. We suggest people visit our web website to read for themselves. Our mission of promoting responsible growth while preserving the quality of life is not a conflict. It is an achievable goal, as this project de demonstrates. Over 500 acres of undeveloped open space is at stake here, including the Calaveras River and its views and watersheds adjacent to the eastern edge of Rancho Calaveras. <clears throat> this application to change zoning and create new parcels has gone through an environmental review in the planning process. The applicant listened to suggestions and comments, made changes, and greatly improved the original proposal. MyValleySprings.com participated in this public process, and we support the end result. Our only concern remains the potential significant effect of additional light and glare on neighbors and night, nighttime views. <coughs> Excuse me. Night, nighttime views. Even a few new homes with unshielded exterior lights, spotlights, or security lights could negatively impact neighbors and views and could change the visual character of this quiet area at the edge of thousands of acres of dark open space and night skies. As there is nothing currently in county code to prevent this and the applicant is willing to include a voluntary condition to shield lighting, which he's handed out to you, I believe, we ask that the board recommend this as an additional condition. The quality of this project serves as an example of responsible development. MyValleySprings.com thanks the planning department for their hard work and the applicant for their generosity and willingness to make this a good project for both the developer and the community. With the condition for downshielding of outdoor lighting included, MyValleySprings.com supports this project 100%. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions by the board? Uh, I have a question. <coughs> uh -huh. Can and I think it might have been answered, but in your uh, comment letter on page two, you talked about the remaining parcel and confusing language regarding future subdivision of the remaining parcel. Uh, it would be undertaken as subject to a conditional use permit and um, so has that been addressed on your part? I mean, <clears throat> so like... From what I understand, yeah, we were concerned with what was going to happen with the 359-acre yeah. remainder parcel. Yes, before, uh, this was before the Planning Commission uh, hearing, okay. and this was before we learned that they were going to uh, den dedicate, donate that land to Mother Load Land Trust. So when we learned that that was going to happen and that the land would be preserved in per perpetuity, then our concerns for the development of that remainder vanished. So it's not the issue of it's not an infill. Exactly. It's right, right. And okay. it, before they before the applicant volunteered to donate that land, there was a potential for development and okay. it was being described as infill, which we did not agree with. <laughs> infill of forty acres. Okay. Right. Thank you very right. much. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comments? Please come forward. <laughs> my name is Peter Reyes, Rancho Calabres. First of all, I'd like to mention that, lo and behold, my valley spring and I in agreement. Now, I, my read on the whole situation is a little different than theirs, uh, and I want to support the applicant fully. And I, my spin is that. Unfortunately, they're going to have my sympathy because the ideal that they're going to dump all this land, it's a desperation to get the hell out of here because you just don't give out hundreds of acres because they want to be nice. My view, their perspective, and I'm, they're not saying it, they have to be nice and diplomatic and all that stuff. The future and land value in this county it's awful. You just want to get out of here. You know? I, I, they got my sympathy. They want to do everything and get out of here. Now, as far as that light reflection, folks, are you setting a precedent? Are you setting a precedent that you want to look all over the county what kind of reflection you're going to get? 
I want to set a precedent about controlling hot, hot gas. I'm looking for a personal catalytic converter that I can suggest to some people in around Valley Springs <laughs> to control hot air, CO2. But the bottom line is, these folks, from my perspective, they desperate. They want to dump, get out of here, and just get away with 40 acres, get rid of it while you can. That 40 acres, <coughs> if they would be bought to five acre lots, you know what kind of income the county would have? So that's maybe just my ignorant, uneducated, dumb perspective of it. But I fully support it, and I give him my sympathy, and please approve it. And don't set any precedent that you might be sorry for down the road. Because I know a couple of neighbors a little bit off from me that I would love to shut their lights off too. Thank you. Other public comments? <coughs> Joe Kelly, with this concept of dividing this into and bringing in uh, three other 40 acre parcels brings up the issue. Again, Mr. Tryon, I ask you to recuse yourself on a conflict of interest, ethics violation. You voted on the less than 40 acres without public water and sewer, yet you're going to benefit on your own, on county pro property of yours that is now in county. And I do see this as a direct county violation. County. Yeah, that property that you have that's sitting there in the sphere of influence, is that not still in the county? And that which is going to be laying underneath that 49 bypass, should it come about, is that not in the county? It's your time to talk. Oh, well, thank you. But it's also your time to talk because you have a potential problem here. It was brought up before LAFCO. It was brought up before this board before. And apparently you're just going to ignore everything of a potential conflict or a conflict of interest and ethics violations. I suggest maybe you would have county council give you an ethics lesson before too long again. And I think you owe it to these people that they now have a, if you do have this stuff, you should uh, say, Yes, I do, and back out so that they have an understanding of what's going on. So that the people in this county through this program that's being televised also has knowledge of your project. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. Good morning, Rosemary Wilson, McCullamy Hill. I just wondered in terms of the public access down to the river, whether that was, I have no idea of the, the terrain, but is there, or what consideration has been made for um, handicapped, uh, 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 disabled uh, parking and uh, access to that public um, walkway along the river? Thank you. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. <clears throat> Hello, Tanya Dawson from Valley Springs. And um, neighbors um, purchased their property knowing full well the potential for development in that area. Um, it's not the government's business to be recommending shielding lighting and imposing other, um, their vision on property owners. When somebody purchases their property, they shop for their property, they know what rights come with the property. It's not up to some elite little group to decide what they can and can't do with their property after they've already purchased it. Um, your role in the government, you've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, and part of that is protecting property rights. Um, so, um, our property is just like our money, it's just like our car, it's an extension of our time, energy, and talent. Um, My Valley Springs and others are not entitled to impose their vision on someone else's private property. They may have an opinion, and that's very interesting, but it's only their opinion. It should not be carrying weight. Um, over somebody who has actually put their time and effort and investment into purchasing property. Um, it, it's none of their business. You know, it's just meddling busybodies. Um, under the Constitution, 
you need to protect our property rights. Um, our country is unique in the recognition of property rights. Um, and you can't undermine it. You know, if you start undermining it, then we're just like all the rest of the stupid countries. You know, our property rights make our country special. Um, and if you give in to this mob rule, you know, public opinion, majority rule, mob rule, um, it reduces our freedom and it prevents people from enjoying their property and pursuing the prosperity. So, thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Any other public comments? If so, please come forward. I'm going to close public comments. Uh, our rules now will go back to the applicant, which is you, sir. Do you have any closing comments you'd like to make? Very, very brief, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we know, the Planning Commission staff and Planning Commission is recommending this. We think we've done our very, very best to provide a fully mitigated project. In terms of the question on ADA, and I'll address this to Mr. Jones, and Deborah Lewis and I have talked about this uh, relative to this issue. This is not the first time this has come up. In the Subdivision Map Act, under Public Access, Article 3.5, at Section 66478.14, I'm going to read it in its entirety. The heading is, this is in the section about that we shall provide access to the river and along the river, which we've done. In this same section, Provision 14 reads, the heading is, and I'm going to quote it exactly, Subdivider not required to improve public access ways. Paragraph reads, nothing in this article shall be construed as requiring the subdivider to improve any route or routes which are primarily for the benefit of non-residents of the subdivision area or non-owners of the real party in question. When Deborah Lewis brought this issue up some months ago, we did the homework on that and we determined that our obligation for access to the river and along excludes any obligation for improvements, maintenance, or ADA compliance. Now, the Mother Lode Trust, obviously, their mission statement is going to address whatever issues they deem in important relative to our endowment, which we're going to fund them with. So those issues will unfold as, uh, as the project gets built and as life goes on. But for today, I don't think there is any opportunity to include that as a condition. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Thank you. Does that conclude, then, any comments from the applicant? Yes, it does. Thank you. Then I will uh, uh, bring it back to the board. It is here for board discussion. I will start with Darren. This is your district. Do you have any additional comments to give, or would you like to give them at the end of the rest of the board's comments? How would you like to? I may have additional comments if it's necessary. Okay, yes, but I don't think that'll be necessary. I think it's not clear cut. But <clears throat> I would just like to reiterate my support for the the project and uh, for the project applicant. And um, in regards to those who may not be familiar with the property or the property topography. Um, I live uh, probably a quarter of a mile or less as the crow flies from this particular access to the river. And it is, uh, I, I would say that your best bet for traversing that terrain without personal injury would be to wear a pair of golf shoes with large spikes on them. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea uh, in, in, <laughs> in regard to your own personal safety with the, with the terrain. Um, in, in terms of the in terms of the request for um, lighting that was uh, put forward by MyValleySprings.com for additional voluntary mitigation measures for lighting, <coughs> um, uh, Ms. Dawson brought up a comment about um, people seeking to impose uh, their opinions or those things. Um, in this country, we have a free right we have a right to free speech and uh, granted to us under the First Amendment to have our voices, uh, our opinions voiced and, and our concerns addressed. Um, the applicant is certainly under no obligation uh, to provide these mitigations. Um, they have received the opinions and uh, wishes of the Maya Valley Springs group and they have uh, committed to on paper uh, legally, uh, they have no problem with these mitigation measures and they're uh, more than willing to do that. So I don't see this as a coercion or a force tactic uh, because, uh, you know, the, these people have a project they're pulling forward. I mean, they've been over backwards on many different, th you know, instances to show their willingness to, to do what it takes to make this a quality project. In terms of Mr. Race, uh, his comments about um, these people are getting suckered or something like that. I think, he, I can't remember the word he used, but that was basically the, the gist of it. I know Mr. Ray owns property 
also that you know, someday he's hoping to have more value for it as well as I do. I think we all hope to have the maximum possible value of our properties. Um, what I would submit to you is that um, these parcels in question um, here on this application would be worth far less if there was a number of five acres all next to them. Um, I have friends that have been privileged in life to be more financially successful than I that have that own property currently in, in various locations, including Las Gatas Hills, where these things have been set aside, uh, and that pro the property value skyrockets because they do have some uh, some buffer between them and the next uh, neighbor. Um, the topography is, um, is uh, the integrity of the topography as it, as it is in nature is, is largely intact. Uh, there's mitigation measures that are put in place to try to keep it scenic and, and uh, respectful to the original uh, features of the land around the parcel. So, uh, you know, it's a difference of opinion, I suppose, but um, being that I do have a, a, a license to practice real estate in the state of California, um, I would say that it's my professional opinion as someone as a, a licensed real estate person that this would add to the value of those people's property over the long run. Uh, you may disagree with me, and that's fine. Uh, but I think the individuals in, involved in this project are fairly intelligent, probably more so than I, and I think they took all those things into consideration uh, uh, when they made this proposal. So. Okay, I'll go to Marita, then I'll go to Gary, and then I'll go to Steve, and then myself. If that's all right. So, Marita, you're next. Oh, yeah, up. okay. Um, I wasn't, I'm going to just ask my questions. Do you want to come forward? Um, you want to Deb, yeah. Diane, why don't you come forward so maybe you can answer something to Debbie. Pardon? Debbie. What did I say, Diane? Deborah. I don't know how many times I've called you Diane. My apologies. Uh, Deborah, I'm just going to ask questions and then uh, you can <coughs> clarify it later. <coughs> On the um, RAEP, um, will uh, livestock be allowed on the 40 acre parcels? Um, you don't have to answer. We can just, we'll just go through them. Um, the Environmental Protection Zone does not specifically exclude livestock. Um, horses, for instance, um, it actually allows, um, without a conditional use permit, a personal equestrian facility, but not a private or public. Um, the terrain itself would probably be self-limiting as far as livestock, owing to the steepness. It's all manzanita and buckbrush. There really isn't even any grass out there to support livestock anywhere. Well, yesterday I attended the um, Calaveras Grown sponsored meeting with USDA, and there was a cattle rancher there who had 40 acres and was going out. I guess my concern is, is whether it's a horse for personal use or cattle or goats or lambs, if that's allowed, there, I didn't read anything. I mean, we are a right to farm county, but um, as we all know, that does create problems between neighbors. So I, I was just <coughs> asking the question, if it's allowed, there's nothing in there, be, and it gets back to the deer fencing. I mean, that's sort of <coughs> made me think of it also. So um, if livestock, goats, sheep, cattle, whatever, are allowed, um, what's to protect that person <coughs> who has an ag operation uh, against their neighbors? Like, um, <coughs> I, I wasn't clear on maintaining the access road to the river. I understood the conditions and why, but I didn't see anything about how is that maintained, who maintains that. Um, now, it's, recall that it is not an access road to the river. It's a 10-foot wide pedestrian pathway easement that happens to follow along with what we are referring to as a bulldozed track down the hillside as opposed to an access road. I've had the pleasure of hiking up and down that road myself, and it is not something that I would consider would even be remotely safe to try to take a vehicle down, um, just no, no, owing no, to the steepness. I understand it's a non it's a non motorized, whatever it is the term is that you used. I used access mm -hmm. the ten foot wide 
but at some point it might need maintaining or maintenance. How is that done? You know, that will be um, the Motherload Land Trust is also accepting the pedestrian access easement from Harding Road to the river and the easement along the river itself. Ultimately, the long-term responsibility for maintenance of that um, will be will accrue to Mother Load Land Trust, okay. and that's taken into the calculations when they determine um, the endowment that they accept along with the easements. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, mitigation measure AQ1 having to do with bird permits and uh, permits. Um, it says delay suspend activities during high winds. I mean, that whole mitigation measure, there was nothing in there that talked about burn days, no burn days. So um, it just says you need a burn permit. We get our burn permits. I think if it's more than five acres, they have to get one from air pollution con control. Isn't that right, Tom? If you have more than five acres, you have to get it. I don't know. Just burn it. <laughs> Well, let's remember we have an escape burn on the Tryon property. So we have a, yeah, five it's more acres. than five acres. That's what it is. What is the requirement? I thought it was more than permit. five acres. You need a bird pit if you permit if you have more than five acres. No, you still need a permit. Yeah. After the second. Yeah. You still, I mean, okay. I have to have a but permit. After but I, that's not my question. My question on this is there's nothing in there about burn days, no burn days. Uh, well, that yeah, is. That's law. That's that. It's, it's maybe. I don't have well, to put that in. It just says delay activities during high winds, yeah. but you could not have a high wind and still have a no burn day. So, um, so take it out then. No, it's, re it's redundant. Um, no, you could have a high wind and still have a burn day. It's good. You don't have burn days and high winds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the. <laughs> On um, uh, mitigation measure, cultural one, on page five, a note on the final map shall state the existing access road shall not be further improved for use by two-wheel drive vehicles. But uh, in order to limit traffic in the prehistoric cultural research, is this separate from the pedestrian path? Or is uh, that, that mitigation measure actually predates um, the pedestrian access easement dedication to the Mother Load Land Trust. So it is somewhat less relevant at this point in time. Okay. Um, I haven't answered that one. I uh, do appreciate um, what the uh, developer chooses to do on uh, lighting. That's been a controversial issue in this county for a long time. And I understand it's a voluntary, but I'm not clear on how it's proposed to be, re how it's proposed to be done. And um, is it going to be recorded? It's just, oh yeah, we'll just tell people when they buy it. Well, that's, that doesn't do anything. So I'm not clear. Go ahead. Well, typically um, a condition like that would be included as a notation on a map and at the time, the subdivision map, and at the time that a purchaser does buy the parcel, they receive a copy of that map. Okay, so it'll be recorded on the map. Uh, and so when people buy that property or the properties, they will understand how they have to deal with the lighting issue. Okay, still would like a lighting ordinance. Mitigation measure, whatever, at the end it says approved by supervisors by the chairman. We don't use that term. It's just a little cycle. Um, <clears throat> on the letter from that um, Randy Metzger wrote in 06, and I really wasn't clear on how, when reading the documents, 
The project split by a separate tax code area and will result in multiple APNs assigned to accommodate legal parcels. I'm assuming that was taken care of so we won't have two APNs on a parcel, did it? Uh, that comment letter was received prior to the final version of parcel configurations. I'm not certain how applicable it is, but it hasn't previously been a problem when people have had large acreage parcels that are split by different tax areas. It sometimes happens. But I thought that was something that we were trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid split zoning and we're staying away from split general plan land use designations as much as possible, but um, split tax zones have not formally been a concern to the planning department. Um, it has been an issue when, when items have come before the board on two APNs on a parcel, separate from what you stated on split zoning. Um, so as I understand it, this will be under Rancho Cal CSA, so the road will then be maintained by the CSA. The road, the new road to be constructed to serve the four parcels, the on-site road as it were, will be paid for by a maintenance agreement among the four residents that live on that road. Annexation into the CSA allows those four residences to provide their fair share for maintenance of the Rancho Calabas roadways that they will now be using. Excluding the new road? Yes. Okay, thank you. And the other question, it's been alluded to this morning that this project has taken a long time and that it's the fault of the county. Um, could you please tell us why it's taken five years? Um, this one um, has always presented a somewhat problematic aspect given the extreme topography, um, the pristine nature of the resources out there, the difficulty of the problematic <coughs> combined general plan land use designations, and it's been a slow iterative process going back and forth between county staff and the applicant to iron through these to make sure consistency is maintained and to make sure we came up with the best <coughs> project design possible. It also, we do continue to have a backlog of projects in the planning department and we are trying to move the historic projects and the new projects that come in all forward concurrently. So everything is tending to move slowly. Uh, this is a quality staff report, Deborah. And I expect nothing less from you, but those are the questions I have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chair. That completes your comments. Geez, yeah. we didn't even make the lunch hour, Marita. <laughs> well, you know, the... Okay, Steve, it's all yours. Carry on. Still with the land, not the applicant. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Uh, I, I only have... <clears throat> good things to say about this process. I, I'm was a little taken aback when it was uh, when there was implied criticism to a process that I find to be pretty civil. That is, neighbors express concerns, the applicant responds and and is flexible. Uh, to me, this is the highest expression of the kind of <clears throat> dialogue I'd like to see around. Development. I also find it uh, wonderful that the uh, the land trust has stepped in and looked at the places that can't be developed due to topography and, and proximity to a river and given added value to the development itself. I think that's really quite a, a remarkable thing. It also is responsive to the neighborhood uh, as it exists. I don't think we have to pit people against each other here. I think this has been a, a remarkable process with a, an applicant that has been uh, enormously accommodating and, and has listened carefully and made it a better neighborhood in the process. Uh, I, I think the last capping piece here, uh, criti criticized as a government imposition by at least one speaker, uh, the lighting arrangement looks to me like a courtesy. Uh, not one that had to be imposed by government, but one which involved consideration for others and not a whole lot of cost. 
and was seen as a, as a value-added part of the project. So I just want to thank you. I, I'm very impressed with, with both of your presentation. I concur with Marita that the report is uh, well done. Thank you, staff. I, too, feel that we should be able to do this in shorter time. Uh, but in any event, the product is superb and makes this a better county. Thank you very much. Does that complete your comments? It does. Okay, uh, Gary is uh, 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 allowed the chair to go next in comments, and then Jer Gary will give the final comments, and then we'll just open it up for, for general board comments and go back to Darren. Uh, I guess my comments are absolutely <coughs> the opposite of Steve's. I disagree with everything he said. Uh, uh, you know, well, what I see in front of us, I find absolutely uh, uh, appalling. Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, it should be, in my opinion, uh, 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 that the county supposedly has use of, of local land use uh, 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 rules and rec reg regulations and uh, uh, implementation. Uh, you know, and that's bad enough. Uh, I mean, that's horrible, mostly because we have to implement state law. Uh, uh, and I think state law on a lot of the land use issues are, are absolutely uh, horrible. But I hear people stand up and say, oh, the, the fish and game uh, 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 recommended, you know, underlining recommended, uh, that this be put into a, a, a land trust. Well, uh, and then, and then the the, uh, the folks, uh, uh, you know, in, in negotiations with uh, uh, with others, uh, uh, mostly environmentalists, oh, they're they're going to, you know, we're going to uh, 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 implement basically the coastal commission now is what's getting implemented on on all our streams and creeks and rivers, and we have to have public access uh, uh, off the private ground uh, uh, to the rivers, which is just a you know a continuation of the of the coastal commission. Uh, uh, which I've never been in favor of, I might add. Uh, and, and, and this is all voluntary. Well, this isn't voluntary. This is coerced extortion. You know, and the environmental community is basically taking a term voluntary that we all understand uh, as being voluntary, and it isn't. It isn't voluntary. I mean, if they don't agree to these things, they're not going to get a project. Uh, they're not going to get a made, made, mitigated negative deck. They're going to get a full EIR, and it's going to be litigated. And the reason, uh, uh, and I'm not saying this is a negative to the property owner or the applicant, uh, uh, the project applicant. I'm just saying that's, that's the way it is. And you do all these negotiations outside of county government. Uh, you deal with fish and game. You deal with MyValleySprings.com, which we don't even have a requirement, but we're going to include what ValleySprings.com wants. Uh, we're going to include the, uh, the walking path. You know, those, these aren't county government rules for requirements. County government isn't even hardly in the process. We're just coming along after the fact and endorsing all the extortion that's taken place uh, uh, between all the special interest groups and developers. And this isn't unique. This happens all the time now. I mean, this is basically how land use uh, uh, policy is being implemented uh, in the state of California. Uh, it's, it's almost outside of, 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 of government itself. Government has, has endorsed and empowered these special interest groups of, of, to come forward uh, and do these things. Uh, uh, and then it gets presented to us as, as a done deal, and there's nothing in county code requiring all this. Uh, this isn't county code. This is just private special interest groups cutting their deals or will kill your project, uh, and, and they will kill it. Uh, and this happens uh, all the time, and it's a horrible process. Uh, uh, to have to witness, uh, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I have spoken out strongly and, and taken much criticism that I am not at all in favor of the concept of perpetuity. Uh, if you were an econ major, you would get an F minus in econ 1A if you were an advocate of, 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 of perpetuity. Nothing gets locked up in perpetuity. That's a religious term. We go to heaven or hell in perpetuity, and there go our souls. Uh, we don't allocate resources in perpetuity. I mean, one of the keys to economic growth and economic success is to free up capital and not to tie it up. Land is capital. And we're tying it up in perpetuity. I mean, that, that's, that's just asinine that we know what's going to happen 25 years from now or 50 years or 100 years from now, and we're going we're to define perpetuity 
uh, for all our, our, uh, our, our people to come after us. We're going to define uh, what the land use policy should be. I mean, that's asinine. That, that's just an asinine concept, uh, 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 the concept of perpetuity. Uh, that makes no sense uh, 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 at all. So you look at this. You know, and I'm not saying you know I, I'm going to vote against it because every developer is going through the same thing, and there's nothing they can do about it, uh, not a dang thing they can do about it. Uh, but it's just it's certainly an asinine system we've put in place that we're that we're uh, 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 um, uh, dealing with. You know, and I wish people would quit using the term voluntary when voluntary is is absolutely the opposite of what we're witnessing. It's coerced extortion. Uh, and they're going to destroy another term, and we're going to have to redefine what voluntary means by the time the environmentalists finish with us. Uh, so having said that, I have a couple uh, questions of Deborah. Um, first is, it seems to me we have the wagon in front of the horse somewhat on the LAFCO issue. Uh, are we going to create four parcels, and if LAFCO doesn't approve the annexation, we have four parcels with no access? LAFCO has been participating in the process fully, and we okay, anticipate but they haven't no approved difficulties. It. They have not approved it yet. So what happens if they don't approve? What happens if we approve this today, uh, and LAFCO does not approve the annexation for whatever reason? Then the private road on site will be as it was proposed to be maintained by the people on site. Okay. If LAFCO does not approve this, LAFCO does not receive the donations from those four new residences for the Rancho Calaveras roads. Well, how do they access through the Rancho Calaveras roads if they're anyway making because no contribution? They are public roads. They are just not maintained by the county. They've been dedicated as public roads. Yes. And so other they people, have other, the right they've, been to accepted, they've been accepted by the county. So. It's my understanding that they are, and the right to use these roads yeah, they're, they're, already they're, they're, the they're public roads privately maintained. Yes. <coughs> Same as Bar 20 and, 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 and the other uh, uh, CSAs. Yes. Well, okay, just go back to my basic question. If LAFCO mm -hmm. says no, then what happens? LAFCO doesn't, re well, not LAFCO, but the Community Services District does not receive the money to maintain the roads. But they still have access to the community service area roads. Yes. So it is to the benefit to. Um, okay. I guess, I guess the other thing is, and hopefully the applicants are aware of this, you can go to LAFCO and they can come up with another whole set of conditions. Uh, of, of, of the, you know, in the end, you throw your hands in the air and say, "Why did we ever do this?" Uh, so I guess you're willing to uh, to assume that uh, liability or risk. Yes. You've, you've done that assessment and figured that that you're willing to proceed. This far down the road, uh, Mr. Chairman, okay. we're going to proceed. Okay. I guess my last comment is is uh, just a sort of a functional one, and that is on the on the on the uh, the ten foot pedestrian eas easement. I don't see how you can maintain a ten foot pedestrian easement and stay within the easement. I mean, ten feet, you can't even get a piece of equipment down there on a ten foot easement. So it seems to me there should be something that says, you know, you will identify a ten foot easement, but you can have. 20 or 30 feet for maintaining it or bringing equipment in or something because uh, as I understand easements I don't see if we have a, a road person here but you have to stay within the easement well if you have to stay within a 10-foot easement it's very difficult to maintain well, a 10-foot easement and if in the future you decided uh, 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 to get a grant or get something and pave it or something you know how do you stay within 10 feet the entire way uh, it's our understanding that it will never be paved. It will always be a footpath. And I would comment that there are many footpaths in very steep terrain in the county that are maintained by hand because there is no other way to do this. Okay, well, you sure, you want, this you sure you want to build that in up front? You know, and, and you just you, you use the term again, you know, well, it will never be paved. How do you know in 25 or 30 years that somebody doesn't want, or 50 years, someone doesn't want to pave it? I mean, we just, you do these things, and it's, it's like you take... You take all discretion away. That, that the, you know, that like the land isn't part of the planet, and, and, and can't be managed and can't be used for for, for human benefit. Uh, to me, that makes no sense at all. So, uh, Comment noted. Okay, so noted and going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it's noted. But it's noted. It's noted. Gary, comments are yours. Well. We've heard from both Careful, sides. you may be costing me votes, Peter. <laughs> Are you running? Not, not that I haven't already. <laughs> yeah. We've heard from both uh, sides 
extremes from one side to the other on this issue. Are you calling me an extremist? <laughs> you mean Merida. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to I'm not going to go there. We've heard we'll about all the comments. I, I do have some a couple questions and then a comment, Deborah. Um, I'm looking at the uh, mitigation measure um, for on-site wastewater treatment systems. Mm -hmm. And it says it will require investigative studies and detailed engineering design of an on-site septic system. On-site testing has been completed and shallow soils have been confirmed. A sand filter mound system with a large surface area has been proposed. Final design and installation shall be certified by a professional and approved by the county. Uh, the reason I bring that up is this is very steep, steep terrain and the proximity to um, the river if some of these fail, these systems fail in the future and the septic going down during heavy rains and draining into the river. On, on parcel number one, you have an existing wastewater disposal area and I, I'm assuming there's already a house there. There is a house there, There's yes. a resident living in the house yes. at presently. And then there's an abandoned leach field <coughs> next to that existing wastewater disposal area. What's the proposal for this existing wastewater if it's part of the mitigation to use this other type of design? Is it going to be re-engineered? What's going on with this? No, it will not. It's my understanding that has that system exists. It has been approved by Environmental Health and it's been in operation for a number of years. That site also supports a well, so the existing residents will continue to go forward with the well and the existing um, wastewater treatment system on site and the three new parcels will have water from CCWD and they will each have their own on-site um, leach field. How, how long do you know the age of this disposal system that's there? No, I do not. Okay. All right. But the other three are going forward through this mitigation yes. measure for a sand, sand mound in a large area, which, which was testified, I think, was three quarters to one acre area that was going to be used. For um, on each one of the parcels, um, it doesn't show up on your smaller maps, but on your larger maps, um, there is a wastewater disposal area also designated on each parcel. And these were developed when the wastewater study was done as being the areas most favorable for installing those systems. Most favorable, but we still have to go forward with, with um, some engineering of these septic waste systems. Is that correct? That's correct. Because of the shallow soil conditions that are there? Yes. Okay. All right. I just have some concerns about the, the terrain and, and heavy rains, a failing septic system, where it's going to end up. Um, the other comment I had is um, under the mitigation measure Bio 1. Just so you understand, this can be very expensive, very, very expensive, and we know this up here at the board. It says, construction and development of the proposed project shall completely avoid any disturbance within the 100 feet buffer area of sensitive areas of the elderberry shrub. <laughs> so, please be aware, it can be very expensive. Comment noted. Okay. So that's all I have. Okay, uh, then I'll open up uh, uh, the board. Does the board have any additional comments amongst themselves? Darren, do you have anything additional? I do. Um, one of the things I'd like to address, um, I, I give uh, full marks for Tom's passionate speech, and uh, I would say without going into detail that there are many points that you made that I absolutely agree with. So you're not alone. Yeah. And it's some of those... Uh, the damn thing we can do about it. So okay. Go out see for it. But what I would... The, the point I wanted to address, the one thing I did want to address specifically was something um, known in real estate law as prescriptive easement. Um, if you've had an opportunity to access uh, a river, a lake, uh, anything of public interest or has had for, for, I believe it's five years, uh, creates what's called a prescriptive easement. Five, five years. 
Yeah, yeah, five years, it's a prescriptive easement. I first became familiar with this when living in Modesto, and there's an individual who owns a lot of property there named, uh, by the name of Naragi. He had a lake that he created that was man-made on the east side of Modesto with the intent to build the development, uh, including homes and commercial retail. Uh, kids from the local area fished it, you know, because it was planted, and somebody had the bright idea to put some piranha in there. Uh, piranha are illegal in the state of California, and they would not survive the winter because they're a tropical fish and they require a minimum temperature of 70 degree water for survival. However, um, be that as it may, there were some that were planted in there during the summertime and with the temperatures in uh, Stanislaus County, they were surviving and thriving. Uh, they fenced the area off and that became a big, huge legal battle in terms of the prescriptive easement laws that are on the books in the state for people to be able to access that lake even though it was private property. In this instance, the, the Calaveras River water uh, shed and the river is not private property, it's public property, and there is a prescriptive easement. There are many also dedicated easements within the, uh, the Rancho Calaveras subdivision, which many, some people are unaware of, and someday I'm sure they'll be unpleasantly surprised when they have to remove their fence so that people can access the river. But we'll get to that and we'll cross that bridge when that time comes. But, um, I guess Tom's left the room, so hopefully he heard me say the word prescriptive easement because that addresses the question that he had in terms of needing to provide access uh, if the access has been, if there's been access for five years or more, uh, prescription eas prescriptive easement through the, the state laws provides for that. So. Does that complete your comments? It does. Uh, Tom had to leave the room. He had an emergency phone call, so I'll be running the meeting <laughs> until he gets back if he does return. Um, is there any other board comments on this item? Seeing none, and I have none, although I will make a comment that, that I, I agree with Tom on a lot of the issues. I am a very um, strong advocate for property rights. Um, always have been. My votes in the past have shown that. Um, so that being said, I will call for uh, a motion on this item. I'll make the motion for approval since it's in my area, and I would say that my uh, motion to make for the approval of this uh, project is such that um, the things that were brought up by some to be particularly, um, in their opinion, egregious, um, I would remind you once again that these things were asked for and they were granted uh, without any government interference. Uh, as Steve noted, um, it, it was in the spirit of cooperation. Some people may see that as coercement or extortion, be that as it may. Um, they're willing to do that, full, knowledgeable, and so I support it and make the motion. Does your motion include the, uh, it includes voluntary the lighting? The volunteer lighting, yes. I second that motion. There's already three items here. Yes, sir. Yeah. There I, I, I motion to accept right all three, yes. Yeah. Okay, Jim, has the motion been properly made to include all the action items on the agenda? Well, uh, I think the board usually specifies that you're approving the mitigated negative deck uh, for the project. Okay, that's where we are? Yes. Can okay, we do it all at one, one, just one fell swoop? Or can we do it, can we put them together? Yes. Okay. I make a motion to accept all three uh, uh, parts of the resolution as stated, and I make the motion. <laughs> okay. And my Since I wasn't here at the beginning, was, Jim, does that adequately reflect yes, I, yes. the action needed yes okay i have a motion by supervisor spellman do i have a second you do i, I second the motion okay i have a second by supervisor walensky is there further board discussion uh i'll just say for the record i'm going to vote for the project to go forward even though i very strongly disagree with the process that has been forced upon the uh, uh, uh the applicant i i am i i don't agree at all that the county, like on the lighting issues, should be including those as a condition of approval when the county doesn't have the authority to make it a conditional of approval. All we're doing is basically uh, 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 imposing uh, the will of an outside uh, special interest that negotiated uh, a special deal on their own behalf. And the board, uh, with no authority to do so, is now including it as a condition of approval. And I, I, I find that to be uh, entirely inappropriate. So, so I mean, Tom, when I bring the lighting ordinance back again, will you support it? 
I don't know if I'll support it or not, depends what's in it, but we don't have it, and, and here we are basically just taking a special interest uh, 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 that negotiated something to, to uh, 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 that the project applicant agreed to to get his project to go forward, uh, uh, and we're making it a condition of approval when it's not even, we don't have the authority as a county, in my opinion, to make it a condition of approval. So and then you can say again, oh, but he's offering it voluntarily. Oh, I, you know, one thing we should have banned in this whole process is, the, is using the term voluntarily, because nothing the government does is voluntary with the legal embodiment of force. And if you don't need force, you don't need government. And that's just the simple truth of the matter. So I will be supporting the motion. We have a motion. We have a second on the floor. Are so there further board comments? I, I, I would ask the question, since Tom raises a legal issue, I would ask the question of county council, does this board have the authority to include the uh, lighting language that was submitted by the applicant in this meeting. Do we have that authority? Yes, it's, it's voluntary. The record is <laughs> That's been banned, Jim. Please, don't insult us further. <laughs> can, I, can I just More recite the, the three items so we have a clear record here? Uh, with your permission. How much double speak are we going to go through? Tom, this is a sustainable <laughs> issue. Yeah. yeah. You're approving a resolution. If you want something that's not sustainable, try perpetuity. <laughs> okay. A resolution adopting a mitigated neg wow. de negative declaration for project 2006-007, approving an ordinance for zoning amendment uh, as hand. described in the, uh, in the uh, words packet, and okay. uh, we doing approving a resolution for a Senate parcel map for this project. Those are the three items. Okay, that's the motion. Okay, the second holds second on that motion. Certainly holds. For yes. the board discussion, all in favor to indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Passes on a 5-0 vote of the Board of Supervisors. Why don't we take about a three-minute recess and then we'll come back for review of correspondence. Thank you. Okay, we have one other item on our morning agenda. Review of correspondence, reports, and various matters of concern. I'm concerned. And Gary, we'll go to you today today because you look to be the most concerned. I'm very concerned. <laughs> your pen. That's my pen. My bank. That's why I was concerned. I got uh, your pen. Uh, I have one item. Uh, we have a uh, camera meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the uh, CCWD boardroom. And that's all I have to bring before the board. Aaron, do you have anything for the board today? Um, I'd like you to come back to me so I can look at my okay. schedule real quick. So. Steve, you have anything for the board today? Um, I do. I'll be meeting with the Milk Hill Vets uh, tonight uh, on their recreation stuff. I have an, an ACCG meeting tomorrow uh, all morning. I am addressing a group uh, at the Gold Strike Trailer Park Clubhouse on Wednesday. I'll be doing planning interviews with you all all oh, day yes, Friday. Friday. I hope it's all on people's calendars and mm -hmm. that completes my report. Thank you, Steve. Okay, we'll go to Marita. Marita? In green. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh... She's tongue-tied after yeah. the last I'm going agenda to, item. I'm going to... Um, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, okay. I actually uh, worked 20-some hours yesterday, and I'm a little bit <laughs> off my game today. But, wow. I did, but I did have a... Uh, we figured out the I figured out what it was. Actually, it's the Courage to Change program that's I, I do, at Gold Strike tomorrow. And uh, all, of, all, the, all of us are district, invited. Supervisor of district team. Uh, it's it's the uh, folks from probation, probation that are encouraged oh, to change. If you've never been, it's yeah. worth going. And there's a graduation. Yeah, yeah, there's a graduating graduation. class of, of five or six, and and we'll be there to honor them. They Sorry. wanted to put me in that program uh, during budget hearings. Yeah. <laughs> there's still time. There's still time. Thanks, <laughs> Marita. Um, I'm also uh, going to be hopefully at the encouraged to change ceremony. I'll be at the um, hospice fundraiser. Uh, I'll be working the Arnold Run Trail. You'll be working it? Yep. 
What do you mean working it? We go out and we clean trails and we break trails. Oh. With so you, you keep within the 10 us. foot right away? Yep, in fact, less than that, Tom. So, <laughs> so if you see a piece of paper outside that, you just leave you it? You just leave it? <laughs> well, you all should You wouldn't leave the place. right away, would you? <laughs> you all should come help do clear, trail clearing for the Arnold River Trail. <laughs> That's good. When is that, Maria? It's uh, Saturday morning from 8.30 to noon. Uh, I might join you. Meet at the Forest Service in Hathaway Pines. Uh, I'll be going to the groundbreaking for the new visitors center at Big Tree State Park uh, Saturday afternoon. And that's it. So how far is that from the Rim Trail project? Probably, 10 miles? Well, from Halfway Pines to Big Trees, probably about eight months. Eight months. Well, in order to save the planet, I think you should bicycle down. That's bicycle up, Tom. Oh. Or hike from the end of the trail. Could do so, that. It's possible. Get cited for trespassing. We'll have to bail her out of jail. <laughs> okay, Darren, you're up. Uh, what time did? What time are they meeting at the Forest Center? 8:30 a.m. Okay. I also received an invitation to the um, to the uh, groundbreaking at Big Tree, so that's on one of the things or possibilities. So. I, it's my, I might be there. I, I'd like to do that. The thing that I can appreciate, I haven't used the rim trail yet, but talking with um, Tyler Somerset about that, I was excited to find out that I, that you can mountain bike it. Mountain bike, equestrian, and hike. Because the, the, the rim trail, the, uh, the Coast to Crest Trail that goes through over by Party in my neck right. of the woods, uh, that is uh, equestrian, pedestrian only, no bicycles. So that was kind of a bummer because I don't ride horses. That oh, cool. I ride horses. I don't think it's a bummer. No, I mean, I don't have a... I don't own a horse, so... A horse I mean, does. <laughs> oh, a horse. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so tonight, uh, flag ceremony at Jenny Lynn Veteran Park, 6 p.m. Uh, Wednesday at noon, uh, camera meeting. And I think there's something else going on that day, too, but I don't have it on here. Um... Thursday, my regular meetings with uh, voters in uh, Rancho Calaveras and in Copperopolis. Um, Thursday evening uh, should be the regularly scheduled campaign for liberty meeting at the Village Terrace in Valley Springs. I don't know. Yeah, I know the I know the Saturday thing for Sean Hogan deal that that was canceled, but I don't know about Thursday night. Um, Friday plan interviews, which was mentioned earlier. Um, Saturday, I have Big Trees uh, groundbreaking, and also had an invitation to a tea party picnic in Galt. So we got a couple of different invites there. Sunday is my birthday. Well, I survived oh, to be birthday. 41 years old oh. on oh, Sunday. Nice. You're too old to be on the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, th I think that's it, with the exception of uh, a meeting next Tuesday after board. So. Okay, I'll come to myself. Uh, I have an RCRC meeting tomorrow and Thursday, and uh, be back in, in town on uh, <coughs> Friday for the interviews for the uh, planning director. And uh, that completes my comments. Jim Jones, we'll go to you. What do you have for the board today, Mr. Jones, that's voluntary? I'd like to uh, ask the board to uh, cancel the closed session, item 15. I'm not quite ready to talk to you about that yet. If we could uh, cancel it, I'll put it on in uh, probably in two weeks. Okay, so this afternoon then we have redistricting at 1.30, and then 2.30 we have uh, budget. Those, those right. are the two items. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, very good. Um, do you have anything, Jeannie? Just a confirmation, last week uh, David Studley with the Calaveras Historical Society invited the board to a luncheon in June, and we've confirmed that June the 28th is the date that works best for the Historical Society as well as the board, so please put on your calendars at 11.30 to 1.30 a lunch at the Red Barn, and the Historical Society is, is hosting it. It's Tuesday. Oh, it's a board day. Board. Okay. Yeah. And remind me Tuesday morning. I will. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Uh, the, uh, go to Carol then, the board clerk. Budget? Diane. Say it for later. Diane. I'm doing really well today. That's why I did. Okay, Diane. I don't have anything. Thank you. 
Okay, Carol retired. <laughs> well, I have one additional comment. I, I had to excuse myself and go into the administrative office, and they had the Board of Supervisors meeting on the uh, audio there, and I feel that that's a hostile work environment, and that's <laughs> oh. <you> ceased. <laughs>